hello students in this lesson let us study about the airport obstructions okay we'll see what are the classification of airport obstructions and study in detail about each one of it your airport obstruction is classified as follows okay so basically it is classified into two divisions right first one is the imaginary surfaces and the second one is the objects with actual heights in imaginary surfaces again you have different categories like your approach surface conical surface horizontal surface transitional surface and the fifth one is the take off climb surface so in detail we will study about each one of this okay so first let us get into the imaginary surfaces so these imaginary surfaces are the established surface in relation to the airport so basically we establish this surfaces okay established surfaces in relation to the airport are nothing but your imaginary surfaces and to each runway above which no obstruction should be projected not only to the airport but also to the runway above which you should not have any obstruction so the size of the imaginary surface will depend upon the category of each runway and the type of approach planned for that runway so what will be the what will be the size of imaginary surface will depend on what will depend on two things depend on the first one is the category or what you can say is type of runway and the second one is the type of approach you have planned for the runway okay right now there are five types of imaginary surfaces as we have seen before so here you can see so this is a three dimensional figure right what are those the first one is the approach surface see this portion is the approach surface next is your conical surface this one so this is the first one this is your conical surface second one you can see here this entire region is your conical surface then the third one is your horizontal surface so there are two horizontal surface an inner horizontal surface and an outer horizontal surface right after that you have your climb off surface take off climb surface also it is called as so this one and then finally your transitional surface okay so we can call this as 3 and 3 this one as 4 and this one as 5 so this is the obstruction what we have that's the reason you have these many surfaces in your category so the same 3d figure only half portion see half prospective of imaginary surface only the half is shown so this is your approach how your aircraft is coming right so then this is the transitional surface this is your landing strip what you have this is your horizontal surface and conical surface so this is a half prospective view if you want to go for a plan how it will look see this is how it will look so this is your landing strip this black portion is your landing strip right this much so beside around this landing strip you will have your transitional surface right and this is your approach from where your plane is coming and this is your take off climb this entire thing is your conical surface again you have what inner horizontal and outer horizontal so this is how the plan will look if you put a plan of the surfaces this is how it will look now if you cut a section ab here this is a section ab you observe this is a section ab so this is how it will look so approach is here right then this portion is conical this is your take off climb this whatever you have is horizontal surface and this whatever you have is this is outer okay this is inner surface then you have a landing strip here see here if you have this one is your landing strip so this is how your section ab looks now if you cut in a section cd how it will look so this is outer this is conical right this is your transitional the shape of this transitional if you see like this then here there is a small portion of landing strip because you are cutting like this no right then this is your inner horizontal and outer horizontal so the layout of the imaginary surface plan and section in both the direction and this is what half perspective of imaginary surface and this is the 3d view of your imaginary 
surface. Observe now you know where these five are coming, how it is coming. But exactly what these five surfaces are, we need to study further. Before getting into that, there are some standards which are defined by your ICAO, right? Standards for your imaginary surfaces. So it is like this. Say this is your runway code letters. Uh, type of runway you can say so a a to e you have right what is the side slope as percentage of transitional surface the transitional surface should have this side slope and conical surface should have this side slope then the height of outer or upper circular edge of the conical surface above the horizontal surface should be this much and the radius of your inner conical surface with airport reference point as origin should be this much so these are the standards another standard table is uh, you have your runway codes here written right what are these things how much should be there for each type of runway suppose it's approach surface the width in meter near the end of your runway when the landing is instrumental you have to go for these values and uh, when the landing is non-instrumental you have to go for these values what is this this is the width near the end of the runway then if you come for the divergence of the sides when the landing is instrumental you have 15 percent and when the landing is non-instrumental you have almost 10 percent next length in meters of your horizontal projection of approach surface when the landing is instrumental right and the landing is non-instrumental so basically width divergence length and then is the longitudinal up gradient again for instrumental and non-instrumental so this is about your approach surface if you if you take up your takeoff climb surface why only these two are given because if you observe in this figure this is your approach surface and this is your takeoff climb surface okay so you observe width near the end of runway divergence of the sides length of the horizontal projection and the longitudinal upgrade these are all the standard values for different railway code letters. Understood. Now, as I told you, we'll get into each one of it. First one is your approach surface. Where you can see the approach surface in this, right here. Okay, this is your approach surface. If you observe, this approach surface is in what shape? In your trapezoidal shape, right? So, I'll just write the bulletin points. So, this is normally in your trapezoidal shape. And it is longitudinally centered on the extended line of the runway. Now, this is your runway, right? So, if you extend this center line of the runway in the longitudinal direction, there your approach surface is situated. And it has up gradient from its beginning near the extremity of the runway. So, at the end of the runway, what you can say, it has up surface and it goes on increasing like this, right? It goes on increasing like this. And it should be noted that on both the sides of the runway, this will be there present. So basically four important features. The first feature is that it is trapezoidal in shape. Next is it is extended centrally. So extended centrally after the runway in longitudinal axis of the runway. Right. So the next one is what? So it will start diverging from the end of your runway and increases in its width so here you have if you see at the end of the runway it has the width equal to your runway and then it goes on diverging that is the distance is goes on increasing after the runway and it is applied on both sides of the runway so these are some of the important features of your approach surface then moving on to the next one is your conical surface now where does this conical surface B. So, this conical surface extends upwards and outwards. If you observe, see this is your conical surface. So, this is moving upwards and it is going out. No, one is upwards in terms of y distance and in terms of x distance, if you see, it is moving outwards from the outer circular edge of the horizontal surface. Okay. So, this extends upwards and outwards from the outer circular edge of horizontal surface to a point which is at the at a certain height above the horizontal surface normally this conical surface is circular in shape and it will have a upward side slope right circular in shape upward side slope if you observe here you can 
have a correct look see here it is outwards upwards circular in shape right and it has a side slope which is increasing so thus the radius of the conical surface at its top is more than that of the radius at its bottom surface obviously if you take from here or center of this this radius of the top surface will be more when compared to the radius of the bottom surface right so if i call r1 r2 this as bottom so radius of 1 is greater than radius of the 2 that's your bottom surface the conical surface uh, seems to be resting on the horizontal surface below okay so the slope of the conical surface normally is measured in a vertical plane perpendicular to the periphery of your inner horizontal surface right so this is about your conical details about your conical surface moving on to the third one is the horizontal surface now this extends from the upper edge of the transitional surface to the inner or lower circular edge of the conical surface so if you observe this is your horizontal surface so from upper edge of transitional surface to inner or lower edge of conical surface so thus what will happen the outer edge of the inner horizontal surface is same as the inner or lower edge of the conical surface okay now this inner horizontal surface will not be a circular in shape okay so it will not be circular in shape so the radius of or the outer limit of the inner horizontal surface are measured from the airport reference point or the point established such purposes we will measure the distance normally the outer horizontal surface is circular in plan so outer horizontal surface is circular whereas inner horizontal surface is not circular okay and uh, this outer horizontal surface is uh, normally at a height of 150 meters above your arp okay so what is your arp airport reference point understood now this will be applicable if the airport runway length is less than 900 okay runway length is less than 900 if it is between say 900 meters to 1500 meters then this will be at a distance of 9900 meters from arp and if this outer horizontal surface if it goes beyond this value so if it is beyond 1500 meters then it will be 155 1500 meters okay from arp so this is about your horizontal surface the next one is your take off climb surface now what exactly is this this type of structure again is trapezoidal in shape see here this red portion is nothing but your take off climb surface again this is what similar to your approach surface okay so trapezoidal in shape it also has upgrade from its beginning near the extremity of the runway which is on the take off side so whichever is the take off side there it will start beginning and it will diverge as they extend away from the extremities of the runway so this will also diverge diverge and also has side slopes or gradients you can say understood now the last one the fifth one is what is the transitional surface this transitional surface also is again trapezoidal in shape here you can see a small portion this is your transitional surface which i am shading in the blue if you want to see exactly you can see in the prospective view see this is your transitional surface which is trapezoidal in shape right here also you can observe this portion is your transitional surface understood now this also will have your side slope or inclination they extend beyond the landing strip and uh, the upper part of the approach surface so from the landing strip to the approach surface they will extend again this will slope upwards and outwards to your inner horizontal surface so this is about your transitional surface the next type of uh, obstruction is the objects with actual height so an object uh, which extends a certain limited height above the ground is considered as an obstruction to the air navigation unless it is not considered objectionable by special aeronautical studies okay 
now to understand this or the how much height is the limit we have to get into this picture there are certain rules which will be considered okay so now this picture is for the approach zone profile for runway with instrumental landing suppose we have instrumental landing what are the object or the heights of the objects which are considered as objectional we will be seeing okay so this is your airport reference point so this is your runway right this is your horizontal surface uh, radius inner and outer and this much portion is your conical surface right now so the first rule is if the object is within 4.5 kilometer distance from the end of the runway okay so within 4.5 kilometers let us write from the end of runway it will be objectionable if the actual height is more than 30 meters more than 30 meters above the ground or above the level of approach end of the runway whichever is higher either above the ground level or above the level of the approach end of the runway whichever is higher we can take that so if you observe here see from here to here how much is this this is your 4.5 kilometer so up to 4.5 kilometer the objectional height is how much 30 more than 30 if it is there it is considered to be your obstruction okay next second point now if i go beyond your 4.5 kilometer what will happen is now beyond this this 30 meter will be additionally added with 7.5 meter for every 1.5 kilometer this is very important so after 4.5 kilometer for every 1.5 kilometer we need to add 7.5 meters that will be the objectional height now if you observe here i will show you in the figure so this much is 4.5 from here i am adding 1.5 kilometer for 1.5 kilometer we have to add 7.5 so this becomes what 37.5 again for this add 7.5 for the next 1.5 kilometers understood so this is 45 similarly go on adding go on adding right so up to 10.5 kilometers after the 4.5 we have to go on adding the height of 7.5 meters for the 30 right so this will be see the surface whatever is coming because of the objectional heights at every point this is called as your controlling surface understood so this here will give you a gradient of 1 is to 50 and here it will give you a gradient of 1 is to 40 so right this is the second point coming to the third and the final point what is this any object which projects above your 150 meters or the minimum approach flight altitude this should not exceed your 150 meters above the ground if it exceeds it is considered as your obstacle okay so minimum approach flight altitude that is the criteria here in this case okay minimum approach flight altitude or 150 meters from ground understood so this is how we can learn about the objects with actual height as an obstacle so hope the obstacles chapter is clear to you and the classifications also are clear to you thank you